Saudi Arabia is a country of 36 million people that are all under Islamic law. And that's really fun. And you know what else is fun is some of the Google Maps reviews from the tiny towns in Saudi Arabia. And if you just scroll around the map and find tiny towns in the middle of the desert and then kind of zoom in, you will find some of the places that I found when I compiled funny Google Maps reviews from Saudi Arabia. The Islamic influence is large in Saudi Arabia, as you might expect. Um, the official state religion is Islam. And so you have a lot of reviews that reference God. Uh, for example, Knife says this, a restaurant worse than the sea, even if it had less meat than I would have given them. The twine is full of spices and tastes delicious. I seek refuge in God. The rice contains remnants of burlap threads. Flies are full in the sessions above. I don't recommend it. One star. Now, I don't want to ignore the fact that this is basically poetry, and Knife should probably be a poet if he's not already. But here's what I do want to say. This food is so bad that Knife is like, look, it tastes awful. Where can I flee? I must take refuge in something for this level of awfulness. I can only turn and take refuge in God. This is terrible. This food is awful. I need to flee somewhere. I take refuge in God. This reminds me, uh, growing up, I went to a church that had a poster in the bathroom. And so as you sat on a stall, you saw this beautiful work of art hanging over you of a storm, a very violent storm. And it had a Bible verse on it. And this is the Bible verse that was pasted across the wall as you were sitting on the church bathroom stall. It was Psalm 57, one, and it says this, have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. That is what you read with a picture of a violent storm behind it as you sat on the stall trying to get the violent storm out of you. And just like this restaurant, in that bathroom, sometimes the only thing you can do is take refuge in God. I've got another review that references uh, the Islamic God, and it says this, if there is less than a star, I will give them. God is sufficient for me, and he is the best disposer of affairs. I asked, and at first they spoke softly. The quantity was very small according to their description, and most of it was bone and muscle. Again, it's like, look, I had the worst meal of my entire life, but God is sufficient for me. And so it doesn't matter that I basically ordered chicken and all they gave me was chicken bones. God is sufficient for me. I have to take refuge in him. He is the best disposer of affairs. That phrase actually feels a little ominous because they're like, look, God's going to come for you. This restaurant is so bad. A just and holy God is coming in wrath to execute judgment on this restaurant. He's like, look, God is sufficient for me, but he's coming for you. Okay, we've got one more review that references the Islamic God, and it's from Dean. And Dean says this, unfortunately, the restaurant has become extremely bad. Of course, the pie always comes to me with the egg paint clear, and it looks disgusting and smells bad without the hummus, which smells sour as if it were a bite of disappointment. By God, you were the best. But now, unfortunately, it's like God removed his hand of blessing from this restaurant. By God, you were the best. But now, unfortunately, and Dean can't even finish a complete sentence because that's how unfortunate it is that the hand of God has withdrawn from this fast food restaurant. Next time that Dean orders a pie, don't bring it with the egg paint clear. Bring it with some colored egg paint this time, okay? Next up, we have a five-star review of a restaurant in the middle of nowhere in Saudi Arabia. And it says this, five stars, because there is a creepy Fred in it. Now, I don't know if the YouTube star Fred has found his way to this restaurant that has a name only in Arabic that there's no way I could pronounce in English, uh, but it's possible. And this person, who also has a name in Arabic that I'm not going to try to pronounce in English, loves it. Fred the Creep is at this restaurant, and he gives the restaurant five stars because, specifically because, there is a creepy Fred in it. It would get less stars for him if a creepy Fred was not in the restaurant, but thank God 
a creepy Fred is in the restaurant. Next up, we have one of my favorite reviews that I've ever read. It's of a restaurant called Best Falafel, and it's simply this. Owner of the Best Falafel Restaurant, a message for you. Good evening, my heart's tormentor. It's like he's starting a love letter about how lovesick he is over Best Falafel Restaurant. I don't understand. Good evening, my heart's tormentor. But he obviously likes being tormented by this place. He gives it three stars. He calls it the best falafel restaurant. And I get that that's its name, but he's not denying that it's the best falafel restaurant. And this place has such a grip on his soul that he says it's his heart's tormentor. Now, I've never been this gripped by a restaurant. I've been this gripped by a person. I've been this gripped by things that I want in life, but never has a restaurant gripped my heart to the extent that I would call it my heart's tormentor. Have you ever been tormented at the level of your soul by a restaurant? If so, please let me know in the comments below which one and how you overcame it. This next review, we have something getting lost in translation, and that's incredible. That's my favorite type of review. It's very funny when Google Translate cannot translate things. I tried their pressed artist pasta, but I treated the Egyptian cashier with air garbage fast. Something that I saw as I scrolled through reviews in Saudi Arabia is references to people's race pretty often, especially if you're not Saudi. And this is coming up in multiple other reviews that I'm not showing you because I don't think they're as funny. But here's one where this person seems to like the food. They just don't like the cashier who served it to them. And so the cashier is Egyptian. He calls out this cashier is Egyptian. I guess he doesn't like that this person is Egyptian because then he says he has to treat him to air garbage fast. And there's only one thing that I could imagine that air garbage is. And it's what happens when you sit on the church stall and you look up at the poster that says, oh God, my God, have mercy on me until this violent storm has passed. I can only imagine that that's what air garbage is. So listen, if you're Egyptian and watching this video, I'm so sorry if you've been mistreated uh, by anybody as you've been working at a restaurant. So sorry if anybody has dusted you with air garbage. Um, you know, I accidentally have dusted many people with air garbage. Sometimes air garbage just happens without us accounting for it, without us expecting it. Air garbage can happen to anybody at any time, but it shouldn't be done intentionally because of somebody's race. So let me just say this even more clearly, because I want to take a stance on this YouTube channel, and it's a stance that's going to change the world. And that stance is this. Racism, bad very bad. Racism, do not like on this channel. If you come to this channel and you're a racist, stop it. Don't do that. Don't be racist. Racism is bad. Look, I know that's going to ruffle some feathers. I know that I just lost probably half of my subscribers, but I just wanted to put that out there. This is a stance that I'm willing to take. Racism is bad. Don't fart on people because of their race. Next up, we have a review on a restaurant from Asmi who says this, one star, cleanliness is my valley and they are my valley. What, what does that mean? If you like cleanliness, why do you call it your valley? And if they are your valley, doesn't that mean they're clean? So why would you rate it one star? Unless you don't like things that are clean. Unless you're like, hey, I'm in the desert for a reason. Things are supposed to be sandy and dirty. Why is this clean? Unless you're saying that you have peaks and valleys in your life and being clean is a valley for you and being gross and disgusting and sweaty and sandy and dirty is a peak in your life. And so you rated this restaurant one star because they weren't filthy? Asmi, we need to talk. I mean, get in touch with me, get in touch with my agent. Hey, can you get in touch with Asmi? Yeah, this reviewer, I, I don't understand what they meant by cleanliness is my valley and they're my valley. Could you just try to reach out to ASME? Maybe they have an agent, like I have an agent that I'm talking to right now. I'm definitely not talking to nobody over here. My agent is right here. I'm looking them in the eyes. Could you reach out to ASME for me? Thank you so much. My agent is real. Finally, we have a review from Abraham who says this, three stars. Okay, don't worry. Now I am worried, Abraham. Now I am worried. Why, why do you have to tell me not to worry? What, what do you mean? I wasn't worried, but now I am worried. 
If you leave a review of a place and somebody's like, should I go there or not? And you see a review that says, hey, everything's fine. Don't worry about coming here. Everything's fine. Three stars. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Just go there. Everything's okay. Wouldn't that make you be more concerned than when you started looking up reviews? This is a place that I can never go to now because I'm so worried, even though Abraham told me not to worry. Look, if you're still watching this video, I love you more than Google loves translating things poorly, which means that I love you way too much. So thank you for still watching and I will see you next Friday.